Hello, I'm Sarah Kirkpatrick. I'm the Chief Executive of Welsh Women's Aid and I am delighted to have been invited to provide some opening comments for this When Home is Where the Hurt Is Exchange Wales conference series. Exchange Wales brings together leading researchers, practitioners and experts by experience to share their expertise, their research evidence and their care experiences. Through their conferences, workshops, lectures and seminars, Exchange provides high quality training and support to the ongoing development of social care professionals across Wales and beyond. The programme is generously funded by Welsh Government through Health and Care Research Wales and it sits within the Children's Social Care Research and Development Centre, Cascade, at Cardiff University. So who am I and where do I come from? I'm an intimate partner abuse perpetrator specialist with over 20 years frontline experience working with perpetrators across the community and in criminal justice ses settings. But I never left my roots because I started my working life in domestic violence and abuse over 30 years ago in a women's refuge. I dealt with crises, I mopped up tears, I navigated benefit claims and litigation on a daily basis. But I kept seeing the same names coming across my desk. No, not hers. I kept seeing his name. As fast as I watched women rebuild their lives, I saw another take her place, often at the hands of the same perpetrator. And right back then I wondered, and sadly some days I still do wonder, what are we doing about that? What are we doing about the harm and who brings harm and why they bring harm? So I jumped the fence. I took them with me on my shoulder to remind me why we have to deal with the cause as well as the consequence. And as much as I have seen the relentless procession of harm caused domestic abuse, I remain optimistic. I hope the world is getting better and I hope to play my small part, and currently that is by leading Welsh Women's Aid. So Welsh Women's Aid is the national charity in Wales, working to end domestic abuse and all forms of violence against women. We are a federation of specialist organisations in Wales. We work as part of a network of UK services and our members provide life-saving support services to survivors of violence and abuse. And they deliver a range of innovative prevention services in local communities all across Wales. Welsh Women's Aid takes an intersectional approach and we recognise that not only are women disproportionately affected by domestic abuse, but the black, Asian and other marginalised women such as those with insecure immigration status, face further oppressions and further barriers to accessing support. But to paraphrase the words of a much wiser woman than me, until we are all free, none of us are. And so we persist. Welsh Women's Aid deliver one frontline service, and that's the National Live Fear Free Helpline, offering 24 hours a day, seven days a week, bilingual support to callers who are concerned about domestic or sexual violence. The callers to the helpline are not always victims or survivors. We also hear from friends, from colleagues, from parents looking for, for advice. And we hear for, from professionals looking for answers or looking for services and sometimes just looking for reassurance about the cases they are working with. The Live Fear Free helpline is for all of us. So if you don't already know the number, it is 08 08 80 10 800. I'll say that again. It's 08 08 80 10 800. Welsh Women's Aid also, alongside our training, our capacity building, our development work and our quality assurance, host a survivors network because we firmly believe that in a needs-led trauma-informed survivor-centered approach we need to hear the voices of experts by experience. 
We all learn how to make services better, how to respond sooner and to build on good practice and improve outcomes for all when we listen to the journeys that people have already travelled. Welsh Women's Aid's vision is a world in which women live fear free from domestic abuse, sexual violence and all forms of violence and oppression. But for this to be achieved, we need effective responses to harm in the now, as well as social change to affect the future. We advocate for a prevention approach, a public health approach, where we address the root causes as well as the symptoms. And I have to be honest, if the pandemic has taught me one thing far more valuable than how to use a video conferencing platform, it is what a tr prevention approach truly looks like. And so I would ask you to wonder, what is the social distancing of violence against women and girls? What is the hand sanitizer of systemic oppression? And what does a vaccination rollout look like for domestic abuse? Because we need those things and we need them now. Because right now, the intensive care of domestic abuse is overwhelmed and the flow doesn't seem to be slowing down. Social workers and social care professionals work on the front line and your commitment to supporting people to have happier, safer, healthier lives cannot and should not be underestimated. This is not a career for the faint-hearted, nor is it a job where you will get rich. But the rich reward is of improving lives is, I suspect, how you ended up here. And for that, I thank you. It's been a difficult couple of years for all of us, with the pandemic changing how we work, how we socialise, how we learn, even how we seek support. But some things, they haven't changed so much. Domestic abuse and violence against women more widely has been dubbed the shadow pandemic. As calls to the helpline surged, refuge accommodation continued to be in constant demand. Special support services have adapted their work but they have still provided life-saving support. And we are at a pivotal moment right now in responding to domestic abuse and violence. Violence against women and girls is being recognised as a priority by Westminster and the refreshed Violence Against Women, Domestic Abuse and Sexual Violence Strategy is about to be published by Welsh Government. But make no mistake, it will be us, all of us, who turn intention into action, who recognise how to support it earlier. Us who recognise the signs. Us who hold perpetrators to account. Us who remember that together we can improve the world. In conclusion, I would like to thank Dr Alison Rees and Sean Lewis and all of their team for organising this conference series. Domestic abuse continues to be a pervasive problem in our society, a problem which is neither inevitable nor unchangeable, but an issue which will only change when we all work together. I hope that you find the events that you attend useful, that they validate your approach or maybe challenge your thinking, that they invigorate your practice going forwards and that together we will truly achieve change that lasts. Thank you.